In this video, I'm going to show you how to face swap in Photopea. So to get started with this face swap, I've got this image here and I've got this image here, both loaded into the document. Now I want to take the facial features from this guy and blend them into this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is on this layer here, I'm going to press L for my lasso tool, or you can access it by just going into the toolbar. And I'm just going to make a very rough selection around his face. It doesn't have to be neat because we're going to blend it in shortly using a layer mask. Just cover his main facial features, his eyes, nose and mouth and um, some areas of skin around is usually helpful. So I'm just going to press Commando Control J to jump that to a new layer and I'll delete the other layer. So now we've got a very rough cutout of his face. And what we need to do now is align it in terms of size and position as closely as possible with the person underneath. So to do this, I'm just going to drop the opacity maybe to about around 50%, just so you can see both images quite clearly and the rel relevant positions of the eyes, nose and mouth. I'm actually going to right click and flip this horizontally because I think even though they're almost completely straight on, just get the impression that this will work better if it was flipped a little. Now I'm just going to zoom in slightly so we can see a bit more what we're doing. So you're trying to, the game here is to try and align the nose, the mouth and the eyes as much as you can, which is sometimes tricky because people, you know, everyone's different and people's facial expressions are going to vary in their nose position and eyes. So you are just looking for a, an average here. You're not trying to get pixel perfect and everything but what you do want to do is to check the eyes because the eyes let me just pull this face to the side at the moment and put it down here put the opacity back up I'm just doing this to show you now this person's eyes are very wide compared to the original shot but we need to make sure that the relative size of them is correct this is probably more important than trying to use the nose or the mouth um, and they're about the same width and obviously these are his eyes are wider so they're not going to be perfect but if in doubt use the eyes okay so i'm quite happy with that at the moment just going to leave that there we can always adjust this later not a problem so i'll take the opacity back to 100. now i'm going to create a layer mask for that by clicking on the layer mask icon i'm going to press b for my brush tool Make sure the hardness is at zero, so it's a nice soft brush. Maybe make the opacity quite high, but start at 100, and then you can reduce it if you want to blend things in a bit more subtly later. So um, all I'm going to do now is with a black brush as my foreground color, so make sure black's the foreground color, you can then start to brush away and smooth out this selection. So this is why I didn't worry in the first stage about getting a nice selection. It was just very rough because we just wanted to get the pixels down. Oops, I will zoom in again here. You want to keep zooming in and out when you're working on shots like this because if you do too much work completely zoomed in, then you'll lose perspective on the shot. And then when you eventually zoom out, it's just not going to or potentially not going to look very good. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to blend the skin don't worry about the fact that the colors of the skin are different at the moment because we'll fix that in a later step. But see here, there's a very harsh light on the side of this face, which I'm just now trying to blend out. But I don't want to do it too harshly, so I'm dropping my opacity down to, I don't know, 50 or 60%. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger to get a bit more of a feather. And at this stage now, as long as the images are positioned correctly, it's a case of going back and forth. You can press X to swap your foreground and background color. So now with the lower opacity, it's just a case of being more selective about which areas you blend in and out from both images. I quite like that. I'm happy with that, apart from the fact that on the outside of both of the eyebrows, you can see the original um, person's eyebrows are still there. But if, if we try and, 
Oh, sorry. Let's do that again. If we try to um, blur those out, sorry, blend those out, then it introduces this really dark spot, which I don't like. So I'm going to undo that. And if you end up with a scenario like this, you can just create a blank layer in between the two face layers. And we can just go in with a clone tool. So press S for the clone stamp tool. Make sure your brush is very soft again, because Photo P defaults to a hard brush a lot of the time for some reason. And then maybe at a lower opacity, we can just sample and just try and clone out some of these obvious, um, some of these obvious extra eyebrow hairs that are kind of showing from underneath. Just like that. Okay. So now we've taken care of the blend of the face. We've positioned it, we've blended it. It kind of looks quite funny at the moment, but it's obviously not right. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer. I'm going to do hue saturation. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this kind of thing, but with the colors not being too far out, this is what I'm going to choose. And then alt click on the hue saturation adjustment layer and you'll see it will now be clipped to the layer below. And you'll see that little arrow indicating that the color changes here are only going to affect the blended face we've introduced. So what I can do here is play with the hue slider. If I just drag it to the left or right, I'll be quite extreme just so you can see what it's doing. As you can see it's changing the hue, but because we've clipped it, it's only affecting the pixels of the face we've blended in. So it was a little pinkish to start with. So I'm going to drag it to the right, which has gone add some warmth into it. If you go too far, it'll start to go a funny color like this. Small movements are the key here. And then I think it could do with some extra saturation. It looks a bit desaturated. So again, take it up and you think, oh, is that too much? Back that off a little bit. Turn the adjustment layer on and off just to see where you're at. And yeah, I quite like that. But what I'm going to do now is just click on the layer mask, make my foreground color black, and I'm just going to brush it out a bit over his eyes because I don't want the whites of his eyes to be affected particularly. I'm just going to do a little couple of little basic brush strokes over there. Now let's see if it's affecting his lips. It is, but I actually think it suits the image. So another thing to note here is that you can see, especially when I'm zooming in, there's a focus difference between the shot in the background and the blended in face. So the blended in face is actually a little bit out of focus compared to the original image. Now there's two things you can do here. You can either try and sharpen the image that's a bit softer, or you can slightly blur the image that's sharper. Basically, you're just trying to get them both to look as similar to each other as possible. So I'm going to actually do both. So on the original layer, I'm just going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So this is only affecting, as you can see there, the original face behind. And I take this right down, maybe just do one or try one or two pixels, just see how that looks. I think that's too much, it looks too blurred out. Maybe just one pixel. Okay, and that'll just take the edge off the sharpness. And now we'll go to the face we've blended on. And we'll go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And as it started, that looks horrible. So I'd back the radius down to, I normally like to start about one pixel for this kind of thing. And then the amount we can just increase or decrease until we get something. Now you don't want to over sharpen because it'll look it look terrible. We're just trying to get a little bit of a better blend between the two. And I would say if the relevant sharpness or the relative sharpness between the two images is very different, then I would just choose another image to start with. Otherwise, it'll never look good. So the one thing that's still standing out to me, and this is only because I've done this quite a few times and I can kind of notice it, but you might not even notice, is the contrast and brightness level of the blended in face doesn't quite match the surroundings. So for me, like his nose and the areas of his cheek that we blended in and his mouth, they're a little bit lighter and a little bit more contrasty than the surrounding skin and hair. So again, we can easily fix that. And the one way I like doing that is to create a levels adjustment layer. 
and then alt click on the icon as well so it clips again it clips it to the blended face and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to ignore this top section and I'm just going to go to this dark to white bar at the bottom and I'm just going to grab the black box here which is the absolute black point of the image and I'm just going to drag it to the right a little bit and what that's doing is that's taking contrast away from the darker areas and the shadows so what you want to think when you're looking at these kind of images and you're doing these composites is what are the darkest areas of the image that you're adjusting and look at those compared to what the darkest areas are on the image you're compositing them onto. So the darkest area on the man's face that we've blended in is his pupils and his eyes and maybe the shadows in his nostrils versus the shadows in the roots of the hair of the man underneath. So basically I'm looking at these two and to me it just looks like on the original on the original of the blended face, maybe it's just the, the darker areas are just a little tiny bit darker than the darkest areas on the person behind. I hope that makes sense. So if I drag this to the right, it's just gonna lighten up those very darkest areas, just a touch. And you can do the same with the white point here on the other side of the slider. And if you drag it to the left, you'll start to just decrease the absolute white values in the image. So if we look down at the man's T-shirt on the original shot, you can see that's supposed to be white and so that's generally representing the whitest point in the image but if you look at the the blended man's face we can see that the whites of his eyes are actually whiter than the t-shirt which wouldn't make sense in real life that generally wouldn't happen um, and it can help to make it look a bit fake so we'll get the white point and we'll just drag that to the left until we just see it darken slightly so the white of the eyes is more in alignment with the t-shirt and if i turn that layer on and off you can see it's it's helped with the eyes and some of the other dark areas but it's made it a little bit desaturated as a result so we could just go back to the hue saturation layer and just increase the saturation slightly to compensate so at this point let's have a little zoom out and just check what we've done and I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's um, it's a bit of fun, but you can do some really cool things with these techniques. They're just great compositing techniques. And don't forget, because this is all layers, layer masks, it's non-destructive. We can go in any point and refine the blend like this. After you've made all your color adjustments, you can go and blend things in and out. You can even see what it looks like to blend <laughs> back individual features that just looks strange but you could put his original smile back and get a combination of different looks but um it's all good fun and i hope that you enjoy this video and these techniques